South Georgia. This is WLB News 10 at 6. Good evening and welcome back. I'm Jamie Ronovich. Coronavirus cases are exploding across the nation with infections and hospitalizations rising in nearly every state. Officials are cracking down and acting tighter restrictions, and in some cases, lockdowns. We have ABC's Ty Hernandez who has the details. What? Cases of coronavirus continue to rise in all 50 states. 245,040 Americans have died from the virus since the pandemic began, many states imposing new restrictions. Today, Washington state's governor is expected to announce sweeping new restrictions to curb the spread of COVID-19, including a ban on indoor social gatherings and indoor service at bars and restaurants. In North Dakota, the governor changing course issuing a statewide mask mandate. Flint, Michigan has made progress reducing the disparity in death and infection rates among African Americans, in part through increased access to testing. But still, the state broke another daily case record on Friday. So I do think we are gonna have to go back into some period of modified operations. Meantime, the head of the Trump administration's Operation Warp Speed so President-elect Joe Biden's team should be given access to the federal program so that nothing slows it down. Warning, thousands of lives are at stake. Now, Governor Brian Kemp did sign a new executive order that's going to renew the current COVID-19 restrictions through November the 30th. It's going to take place on November the 16th. That's tomorrow at 12 a.m. Governor Kemp is asking that all Georgians follow the CDC guidelines. Excuse me. <clears throat> Now, a record number of women are set to serve in Congress after this election. At least 141 women will be serving next year, 116 in the House and 25 in the Senate, although that number could change depending on who files or fills the California Senate seat vacated by Vice President-elect Kamala Harris. Now, it's still a jump from the previous year. In 2019, the total of number of women in Congress was 127. 643 women ran for Congress this year. That's double the number in 2016. Now, federal judge is also throwing out right, some new DACA rules saying that Acting Secretary of Homeland Security was not legally serving when he signed them, but and that was due to an uh, invalid order of succession. Now, the new rules would limit DACA applications and renewals as well. And with the U.S. reporting nearly 11 million coronavirus cases, uh, health officials are stressing safety first ahead of this Thanksgiving holiday. We have Polo Sandoval who reports. More than 100,000 new COVID-19 cases are reported in the U.S. Water? on Saturday, the 12th day in a row. You want it? saw at least 100,000 okay, new okay. cases of the virus. Nice. It's expected that cases in the U.S. will only spike at Thanksgiving. They're stressing health care systems and talking new restrictions of emergency physician told CNN on Saturday. This the states continue reporting soaring numbers of new hospitalizations and deaths. Dr. James Phillips, Chief of Disaster Medicine at George Washington University Hospital, told CNN he's terrified about what's going to happen this holiday season. People are going to travel. People that would normally travel because they don't believe in the science, and then those that are just fatigued uh, who are willing to take some chances. And we're going to see an unprecedented surge of cases uh, following Thanksgiving this year. And if people don't learn from Thanksgiving, we're going to see it after Christmas as well. Our fourteen governors around the country to issue stringent new COVID-19 measures, including most recently in New Mexico, Colorado, and Oregon. Arkansas Governor Asa Hutchinson creating a winter COVID-19 task force. And New York Governor Andrew Cuomo convening an emergency meeting this weekend with the leaders of six northeastern states. CNN medical analyst Dr. Jonathan Reiner says the U.S. is headed toward an intolerable number of deaths and more hospitals risk reaching capacity. 
You can make more ICU beds, but what you can't make are more ICU nurses. When the holiday season gets underway, it's even more important to wear masks, keep yes, safe distance, and wash hands regularly, say the experts. Everyone should wear a mask, wherever they're at, uh, and in some cases, even in the home, uh, when you have people coming in from, you know, new, newly arrived college students, etc. And how we best achieve that, I think, uh, is really up to the states, uh, but I think we've also seen where mandates have been in place, mask use is much higher. The vaccine is approved and will be distributed across U.S. states and territories based on population. That's according to a top Operation Warp Speed official. The Colorado Governor Jared Polis says that people there who still wish to celebrate Thanksgiving with extended families should have started self-quarantine at least two days ago. Now, AAA is predicting at least a 10% drop in the travel for the holiday, uh, and that would be the lowest one-year decrease in travel since the Great Recession back in 2008. Now, based on mid-October forecast models, AAA would have expected up to 50 million Americans to travel for Thanksgiving. That's down from 55 million last year. However, with an increasing amount of cases across our country, AAA expects that the actual number of holiday travels will be much lower. And in the year as challenging as 2020, finding resilience takes guts and faith, but the rewards can be astronomical. And that's the message that the crew of NASA and SpaceX's newest mission are carrying into the International Space Station as a mission that will be a historic one in many ways. Rachel Crane reports for us. This launch marked the dawn of a new era of U.S. spaceflight. Now, more than five months after that historic test mission, Four astronauts will take the next step. For the crew, we're ready. They're headed to the International Space Station for a six month stay. It's the first fully operational mission for the Crew Dragon spacecraft. There's a lot of firsts on this flight, a lot of amazing discoveries that are going to happen by these four amazing astronauts over the next uh, six months. Just like in May, when astronauts lifted off from U.S. soil for the first time in nine years, NASA isn't running the whole show. It partnered with Elon Musk's SpaceX, the private company that designed, built, and operates the Crew Dragon. It's been 18 years working towards this goal, so it's just hard to believe that's happened. This time, NASA astronauts Victor Glover, Michael Hopkins, Shannon Walker, and Japan's Soichi Noguchi will be on board. The diverse foursome has been training together for months, Glover will be the first black astronaut to join a long duration crew on the space station. What does it mean to you to be a black man and an astronaut at thing? this moment in our country's history? You know, I'm not immune to the, the things going on in the world right now, uh, from the physical uh, insecurity that many people are feeling to the economic insecurity. And I will say this, the overriding feeling that I have is that I want to go up there and do my job well. The crew named their spacecraft Resilience in recognition of 2020's challenges. I think all of us can agree that 2020 has certainly been a, a challenging year. Uh, global pandemic, economic hardships, um, civil unrest, isolation. To stay safe, astronauts have been in strict quarantine 30. together, and NASA is begging tourists not to crowd Florida's beaches to launch the liftoff. After all, there will be more launches. NASA's plan is for more trips to the ISS, carrying new astronauts, and perhaps one day private citizens. This is a, a very exciting time for NASA, um, and, and these are, again, uh, historic first. Look at them go. Rachel Crane, CNN, Kennedy Space Center, Florida. Well, if you want to see more that are uh, oh, more yeah. stories that are definitely with you, I'm you can early. keep up with them on our new oh, app. Well, well, not really new now, but Sorry. still. Uh, very, very available for you on Apple TV. You could just head to your app store to download it and look for the big red 10 now. A far right rally in D.C. to protest the results of the election. More on that and President elect Biden's plans for transition. Stand by. Exactly one week after Joe Biden was declared president-elect, far-right groups marched in Washington, D.C. to protest the results of the election. 
And then as President Donald Trump refuses to concede, Biden's team moves on with their transition plans. We have Meredith Wood, who has a closer look. Thousands of President Donald Trump supporters rallied in our nation's capital, including conservatives and groups that are identified as far right. Many repeating the basis claim that the election was stolen from Trump. I think that the swamp is so deep that there's probably been fraud and cheating that have gone on for decades now. If so why weren't you out here in 2016? Really why weren't you out here in 2016 if you thought there was fraud and when Donald Trump I think won? That there's been some fraud in all of the elections. President Trump has yet to concede. On Saturday, he passed by two green supporters on his way to the golf course. This is delaying the presidential transition and blocking President-elect Joe Biden from receiving critical COVID-19 data, foreign correspondence, and intelligence briefings. Despite it all, Biden's team is moving forward with transition plans. What's really important in this, in this moment that we be handing over the reins diplomatically, peacefully between political parties um, to, to the Biden transition team. Uh, we need to be prepared. The team met on Saturday admitting they're seeking back channels to get top level intel on coronavirus, reaching out to former officials since they say the current administration has locked them out. Experts say this obstruction could make the U.S. vulnerable to national security threats. Bad players around the world could try to take advantage of America. And it's happened before, or at least the threat of it has happened before. We don't want that to happen, especially when we're in the midst of a pandemic. I'm Meredith Wood reporting. D.C. police say that they have arrested at least 10 people. Now, more than 11 days after Election Day, some news organizations, again, went ahead and called for Biden winning Georgia. This comes as the state began a hand recount that lasted through this weekend, and the Associated Press is holding off on calling the state until that process is complete. Now, the Republican National Committee is also making a big investment here in Georgia where control of the U.S. Senate is on the line. And it plans to spend at least $20 million on the two Senate runoff races there, or here that is. And it says that it will spend or send more than 600 staffers. Incumbent GOP Senator David Perdue is facing off with Democrat John Ossoff and Republican appointee Senator Kelly Loeffler faces the Reverend Raphael Warnock. And if the Democrats win both races, the tie-breaking vice presidential vote will give them control of the Senate. Otherwise, the GOP will control the chamber there. Now, still ahead, it's the beginning of the Christmas season in New York. We're going to have more for you after this break.